y'all. My name is Stacy with Go Travel with Stacy, and today I am so excited to talk about one of my most favorite things to do, and that's going to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. Uh, we usually go to Universal Studios Orlando, but pretty much everything about HHN, that's what we call it, Halloween Horror Nights, you can't say that a million times, so just HHN. Um, this applies really to California as well, um, but some of the things I'm going to talk about can be exclusive to Universal Studios Orlando, so just keep it in mind. Um, I am going to be referencing my blog post that I put up all about this. It's very in-depth, so I'm going to link that down below. Head over to the blog. You can print it out and kind of reference it if you're looking to go to HHN either this year or in the future, um, but hang in there and let's get to it. <music> So if you've already read my blog post about HHN, you're going to know from the get-go, it's very in-depth and really I don't even know where to start because there's so much to say about it. But the first thing I'll tell you is it's more like an immersive experience. So think about going to your local haunted house, except there's so much more involved as far as scare zones on top of the haunted house that you can walk through. Um, they've got specialty foods and drinks, lots of entertainment, um, a lot of the roller coasters or, or rides that they would have just normally at the park. Those are open as well. Um, not every single ride is open, but most of them are that, that, that we can tell, or at least our favorites are. Um, so there's just a lot more to it than just going and walking through some haunted houses and then going home. One of the other things I want to tell you is that if you are not a haunted house person, you're not a horror movie person, don't feel alone. Jeff and I aren't either. The first year that we went to HHN, we were actually just going to Universal Studios for a vacation. Um, we ended up looking into a lot of videos, especially videos that had to do with October because that was the month we would just happened to be going. That's when Jeff was off and everybody kept talking about HHN. We originally didn't even buy tickets to HHN. We just bought tickets to go to Universal Studios and that was going to be it. But at the last minute, we said, you know, we're just gonna add on some HHN tickets. Uh, if we like it, great, we can go back. But if we don't, we've seen what the fuss was about and then we don't have to worry about it again. And let me tell you, the first night we went to HHN, it blew our minds. We had so much fun. And that really is the reason why we continue to go back every year. Yes. yes, we love Universal Studios. We have so much fun, but really we like to go back for Halloween Horror Nights, especially because it's like getting the best of both worlds. We do Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure during the daytime. We go back in the middle of the afternoon, take a little break, have a rest because we're old. <laughs> and then we hit the park um, back later that afternoon or evening for HHN. Okay, so here are some HHN sort of quick facts for you. Um, HHN is a separated ticketed event. So, separated ticketed, what's separated ticketed? It's a separate ticketed event. So that means that if you have tickets to Universal Studios, let's say you go during the day, you're riding rides, those tickets are not going to be valid for the evening time once the park switches over to Halloween Horror Nights. Now this only applies to the Universal Studios park. It does not apply necessarily to Islands of Adventure. So usually Universal Studios park will close down about 4, 4.30, 5 in the afternoon. Um, they do take about an hour, hour and a half for a change over into Halloween Horror Nights and then the park will kind of reopen um, I think it's about six or so. I could be a little off on the times, but they'll reopen that evening for Halloween Horror Nights. This means that if, let's say, you just have um, Universal Studios Park tickets that day you and you don't have HHN tickets, you will be unfortunately asked to leave earlier. Um, normally, the parks will close down somewhere between 6, 7, and 8 o'clock. That's throughout the year. Sometimes 8 or 9, especially in the summers, you know, they'll stay open later. So, you're not really missing out on a lot of the hours of the park, um, but if you don't have HHN tickets, 
for that night, you will be unfortunately asked to leave so that they can switch the park over and get ready for HHN. Now, the good thing about that is if you have uh, Universal Studios park tickets that day and you also have HHN tickets for that night, they do have something that's called a stay and scream. So around the park, there's um, sectioned off particular areas. I think there's maybe four or five, I'll have to look into that. Um, but they're separate areas, so you go into the stay and scream area, it's kind of like a little holding pattern, you're not really allowed to just walk around, you need to get in that section. Um, and then once the park opens, you pretty much are just first in line to get to the closest haunted houses next to that stay and scream area. Now we did this one year because the first year we went, Stranger Things, the haunted house was a big deal. Uh, we did go through the haunted house. We waited in a very long line to do that. And the second year we went back in 2019, they had um, Stranger Things and then they kind of had added on another section to that haunted house. Um, and what we did was to stay and scream in the area that would put us right next to the Stranger Things haunted house as soon as the park opened. And the best thing about that was we pretty much, I'm not gonna say it was a walk-on because we were kind of in line in the stay and scream area, but we probably waited maybe 20 minutes, walked right into that haunted house and knocked off pretty much the most popular haunted house that year off our list first thing in the night. So we didn't have to wait three hours to get in that house, which sometimes you will have to do. One good thing to note is that let's say you don't have a daytime pass uh, to get into the parks. Uh, you do have your HHN tickets and you're wondering, but I wanna get there and stay and scream a little early. That way I'm already in the park. I can stay and scream. I can get into that haunted house that I wanna get into. You can add on a $25 stay and scream pass that'll get you in a little bit early to the park, so about 4.30 or so. Um, that will allow you into the park. You need to go to your stay and scream area because by this time, they've already started ushering out guests. So it's not really supposed to be used to uh, get into the park early necessarily to go ride rides and stuff like that. It's really to get you into the park, go to your stay and scream area, get in line and, and wait for the park to open for HHN that night. HHN is an event that usually runs somewhere between about early to mid-September until the end of October, 1st of November. Tickets for HHN generally run somewhere in the neighborhood of about 68, 70 bucks per person per night. As I said before, that one ticket into HHN gives you a lot more than just walking through a haunted house or a few haunted houses. Typically for HHN, that one ticket gets you in the gate from somewhere around 6 p.m. till about midnight, sometimes 1 a.m. It just kind of depends what day of the week it is and what time of the season it is. Um, you will normally get about 10 haunted houses. Usually there's about five scare zones that you can walk through as well. Uh, like I said, they do usually have specialty food that you can only get during HHN, specialty drinks that you can only get during HHN. Uh, they've got carnival games. Like I said, some of the rides and stuff are also open that would be just part of the park normally. So it's kind of like you're getting into Universal Studios to go ride some of the rides, but then you're also getting to get your Halloween Horror Night event rolled into the same package. So if you think about it that way, you're really getting a pretty good bargain for about 70 bucks a pop. Now, they do say on their website, HHN really is kind of geared more towards the teenager adult uh, demographic. This really isn't something for, I'd say, kids under 13. Um, for your little kids, you don't really want to take them to HHN. I don't think this is just a personal opinion. The, uh, the scares are really there. The gore is really there. Uh, you know, you have to remember this is kind of like studio, movie studio quality. It's not Disney's not so scary Halloween. For your little kids, I really would try to think about something different like Disney's not so scary Halloween party um, because that's geared more towards not being scary as much as it is just Halloween fun, trick or treating, that kind of thing. Um, what you are getting here are pretty intense 
haunted houses, um, killer clowns, or flesh-eating zombies, or Texas Chainsaw Massacre stuff. So definitely just keep that in mind. You know yourself and your kids better than I do. So let's say your kids uh, are a little bit more mature and you know that they can handle this, then fine. Um, but really just keep that in mind. In that same vein, if you do happen to go to Universal Studios during the HHN season, uh, but maybe you do have smaller kids or maybe Halloween Horror Nights isn't your thing, you don't like the gore, you don't want to see those things, the good thing about it is they do cover up those sets that stay out in the open um, during the daytime. So if you're there during the daytime and you know, Halloween Horror Nights and all that stuff is just not your thing. You don't even want to see it. Don't worry. They do tarp those sets that stay out all the time. That way you don't have to see that stuff if you don't want to. The last quick fact I have for you, no costumes are allowed during HHN, really, or any time at the park. Uh, this goes for Disney as well. Now, usually little kids can wear costumes. That's not a problem. You're not gonna mistake a little toddler that's dressed up in a costume for uh, a scare actor or for a cast member there at the park. Um, really where this comes into play is that they don't want you getting cast members confused with just regular people that are dressed up in costumes. It helps keep people safe, especially if you were to have somebody that's just a regular um, customer coming in that has a costume on and maybe they don't wanna behave properly. Um, it really helps keep everyone safe so that you know at the end of the day, the people that are dressed up in the costumes, they are here to scare you, but they're not going to hurt you. They can't touch you. Um, so there are some restrictions there. So let's talk haunted houses. I mean, that's what you came here for, right? Usually with your HHN ticket, like I said, you get about 10 haunted houses included. These are gonna be a mixture of things that um, Universal Studios has copyrighted material movies, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, maybe they got the rights to Stranger Things, Ghostbusters, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, things that you've heard of, movies you've seen before, mixed with some of their intellectual property for houses that they've made up. Now, I'm gonna be honest, we went and we're so excited for Stranger Things. We went back the second year for Ghostbusters. We're going back this year for Beetlejuice, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We love those movies, but really the intellectual property has been most surprising and usually the houses that we love the most. Now, like I said, these are gonna be uh, maybe things that they've created or come up with. Some examples were uh, graveyard games that we loved when we went in 2019. Now, the idea for this house was that maybe you had some uh, rowdy teenagers. They had been in a, a cemetery and they weren't doing things that they were supposed to. They were being disrespectful. And of course, you know what happens when you disrespect uh, graves and stuff in cemeteries the ghosts are gonna come for you. And so that's kind of the premise for this haunted house. And one of the things that I loved the most about it was that they really went a step further on top of the haunted house to where when you were in the queue waiting to just get in the house, they had a big screen up and it, it was kind of like if you had social media and you were watching these same kids go back and forth, um, chatting, posting on people's social accounts, posting videos of them being disrespectful in the graveyard. And so you really kind of had this backstory before you even went in the haunted house and you knew what was going on, even if you hadn't looked up what the haunted houses were about before. And that's one of the things that I really loved because I felt like it wasn't something that they had to do, um, but it really added to the storyline that you were getting before you even went into the haunted house. What was another intellectual? Oh, oh, another intellectual property that I, I loved that they came up with. And I think this was the first year we went. Um, they had something, uh, Scary Tales, I think is what it was called. And it was pretty well where you took your fairy tales that you knew. So things like uh, Wicked Witch of the West or um, The Gingerbread Man, um, Humpty Dumpty, and you put a spin on it that kind of made it haunted or gross or gory. 
um, to where, for instance, when you went through the gingerbread house, it was kind of more like um, kids have been lured in and of course, you know, the witch is gonna eat the people that comes in. Um, but what I loved about it was that when you walked through the house, you could smell gingerbread, the scent. Uh, when you went through the Humpty Dumpty portion of it, you could smell like rotten eggs, which doesn't sound appealing, but but that's what I'm saying. It, it's more than just going through the haunted house. It's like they try to activate all of your senses, including sight, smell. Um, and so those are just really the things that I think really add to our experience at HHN and while we don't mind paying a little bit more money because we're really getting so much more for it. And that takes me into the second portion, scare zones. Scare zones, I think really was the first thing that hooked us when we first went in. Jeff and I are 80s babies. We were born in the mid 80s. It's really our jam. And the first year we went in 2018, everything was 80s themed. So you had the ball drop for 1984. You had a lot of 80s music playing. Um, like I said, you had Stranger Things that was really popular at the time, which there again is another movie kind of set in the 80s. So everything was really calling to us. And that was one of the things we loved about it because one of the scare zones that they had where the ball dropped 1984 it was as if you were at the ball drop in New York City. They even put it in the New York City portion of Universal Studios. Um, so you really have that atmosphere going there. And then the storyline for that scare zone was that the ball dropped, you were supposed to be there for a party, you had entertainment on the stage. And once the ball dropped, all of the entertainment and everything, they jumped off the stage because really they were vampires and they were there to feast on you uh, for the night. And so then you had all these vampire scare actors crawling through the crowd trying to scare you. And I just thought that was such a neat concept. Um, and again, it's, it's something on top of your haunted houses that you can be entertained by and scared by. And really, Jeff and I got most of our scares in the scare zones because especially if you go on a crowded night, you're trying to meander through a wall of people and you don't realize that a scare actor has been following you and breathing on you and trying to scare you. And you didn't see that they were hiding with this fake chainsaw. I mean, it's a real chainsaw, but the blade's taken off to pop out and scare you because you're just trying to get through the crowd. And so Okay, so let's get into tickets. Now, like I said before, you can go on their website and get a single night ticket. Maybe you only have one night to go. Great. Again, I'm going to read from my blog post because um, there's a lot of differences here about the differences between the prices and the differences between the passes. So I just want to make sure I get the information right. So the first one they have is the Rush of Fear Pass. Normally, this is about $110 plus tax. Um, guests are able to visit the first three weeks of the event, which is uh, usually mid-September through the end of September or so. The next one they have is the Frequent Fear Pass. Now, that's what we did. That's $120 per person, and you're able to visit every Sunday, Wednesday, and Thursday night, plus the first two days of HHN and the last Friday of the event. Um, the next one they have is the Frequent Fear Plus Pass. This is $140. Uh, guests are able to visit the same nights as the Frequent Fear Pass plus every Friday night of the event. And then the last one they have is the Ultimate Frequent Fear Pass. Those are $260. Uh, guests can visit every night of the event that they want to. Those are the passes that you can choose from. Again, I'm gonna link my blog post down because the links to get all these passes, or maybe if you just wanna look at their website, they're all in the blog post. So I've already done the work for you. You just have to go click the links. So let's say HHN's not going on. Um, normally, the, both parks have express passes where you can get on the rides or, or you don't get moved to the front of the line, but you really cut down the weight, I'd say by half or more, 75%. Um, to get on rides or or things like that. Your express passes that you have for the daytime do not work for the HHN event. Again, like I said before, this is a separate event. And so tickets to get in the event and express passes for the event are separate. 
You can get an express pass to, to kind of move up and skip a lot of the line for haunted houses. A single night HHN express pass is about $70 per person per night. Now I would say from usually what I'm seeing, if let's say you've got one night to do HHN um, and so you, you wanna get your money's worth, you wanna go to all 10 houses, I really feel like if you get there at, at the event opening, um, especially if you're going on like a Friday or Saturday night where they do stay open just a, a wee bit later by like an hour, I really think that the the express pass for the event would do you a lot of good. Like I said, some of these lines, you could be waiting up to three hours. And so if you had the express pass and let's say it cut it down to like 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour or less, you should be able to knock out a lot of these houses. Now they also have something that's called like a VIP walking tour. And this is where you go in a group, you have a guide and they absolutely do take you to the very front of each haunted house. So it's basically a walk on for you. Um, again, if you've got one night, um, I would really encourage you to try the VIP walking tour. That way, you know, you may spend all night doing it, but you're going to get through every single haunted house. But I do need to let you know that those are about $200 per person. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's going to be on top of your HHN ticket. So there again, you have to get the HHN ticket. And then on top of that, you can stack an express pass or maybe a, a VIP walking tour or something like that. Um, so yeah, again, if let's say you're going to spend 70 bucks to get into HHN and you only have the one night, so you want to make sure you get through all haunted houses, you're going to be paying about $270 because you got the, the VIP walking tour. So let's say you've made it this far, but you're still not sure if HHN is something that you're interested in. Maybe you're like Jeff and I, you're not super pumped about haunted houses, being scared, uh, gore, things like that, but, but you're still kind of on the fence. Or maybe you're like us, the first year that we went, our vacation just happened to be in October and HHN just happened to be going on and maybe you're, you're kind of right in the fence. We really, really, really encourage you to try the Unmasking the Horror Tour. Now, this is something that happens during the daytime. You need to book in advance and get, get your slot. Um, but we did this the first year because we really thought that maybe it might, especially really me, help me to not be as scared going through haunted houses. Um, because you get to go through some haunted houses during the daytime. You have a guide, you're in a group, the lights are on, there's no scare actors or anything going on. And it's really quite fascinating to see how much detail and creativity has gone into these houses. But what I liked the most about it was that I could maybe see three to six of the haunted houses that I could be going into. That way, when I went into them that night, I kind of knew the lay of the land on how I was going to walk through it. Um, you don't always know where the scares are going to come from because often throughout the night there's a lot of cast changes and so those scare actors switch places so even if you went through it multiple times uh you could get scares from different locations that you didn't expect and that has happened to me <laughs> um but the unmasking the horror tour really just kind of took a little bit of the scare out of it for us which is good for people like us where this isn't a thing that we we normally do all the time i mean we don't go to haunted houses even when we're here at home. Um, so I, I definitely recommend you look into that. I'm gonna show you the prices on that. Uh, like I said, you can pick from three or six haunted houses uh, to be included in your tour. You do not get to choose, they do choose for you. Um, usually they will include some of the most popular ones because you know, obviously we were so fascinated to see the Stranger Things set just to see it. Um, and that one I really just thought was so much fun because you, you got to see again, how much creativity went into it. And if you'd watched the TV show before, everything was just so realistic. Anyways, uh, a three house tour is about 80 bucks and a six house tour is about $130. That is per person per tour. Um, but I definitely, definitely recommend that you, you try that. We had a lot of fun doing it. I'd even like to do it again. 
Um, so, so consider that if maybe Halloween uh, gore and haunted houses just really aren't your thing. Gosh, that was a lot of information. Um, so let me know what you think. Did you agree with some of these facts or tips? Um, are there other things that you would have liked mentioned? Maybe stuff that you normally tell people uh, when you're suggesting HHN to them? Comment below and tell me what you think. Also, don't forget to check out the blog post that I've linked below. It really does give a lot more detail for the, the kind of HHN quick facts that I went over with you. Um, and I've also got another post that is specific to HHN this year. So I'm trying to add all of the houses, all of the scare zones, all of the you know intellectual property and facts as they become available as they're released from Universal Studio. The 2021 HHN season will be going from September 3rd through October 31st this year. Jeff and I already have tickets. We're actually um, tacking it on to the end of our honeymoon. Think what you want about that. Matter of fact, tell me what you think about that. What do you think about honeymoons at theme parks? I just want to know, <laughs> but definitely um, reach out to us. If you see us while we're there, we'd love to get to talk to you. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I've got a lot more travel posts, theme park posts, HHN posts, Universal Studios posts, Wizarding World of Harry Potter posts coming out. So don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified for all of that. Click the little bell so that you're notified every time I post a video. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.